Hi, I'm Callie. I'm a presenter here at Discovery Place Science, and I'm going to take you on a virtual tour of our latest exhibition, Antarctic Dinosaurs. Come on, let's go. The first thing you'll need is a big Canada Goose jacket to keep you from that extreme cold and wind. You can see our other scientist buddies in the plane have it all ready to go. Now we're going to take a plane like this, a large LC-130, to go down to Antarctica, to McMurdo Station. The flight from Christchurch, New Zealand to McMurdo is about a six hour flight, so strap in. So in this first room we have things from uh, the early expeditions of Antarctica. We have some of the things that they wore originally, which weren't as protective as what you see now, unlike what is behind me. Um, our big orange coats that you saw me wearing earlier on the plane. We also have some of the first fossils that were found in those early expeditions down to Antarctica. Unfortunately, the folks that brought back the first sled that we have in here did not make it back to their destination. They were only 11 miles away from that destination, but we were able to recover those fossils. And those fossils uh, inspired a lot of other scientific expeditions to find what we have today. In our next room here, we get an idea of what Antarctica was like early on. It wasn't always this frozen wasteland that we think of it as today. It actually did have some wildlife and some trees. And one of the reasons we know this is because of some fossils that we found. We actually have some leaves from the Glossopteris tree, um, and that gave us some of the first clues to knowing that Antarctica did have this lush wildlife. We also have creatures like our Antarctosuchus. Now he looks kind of like a crocodile, but he was actually more like an amphibian, living in the water, feeding on small invertebrates and fish, things like that. And we actually have a skull from the Antarctosuchus, or part of it rather. It might not look like a lot to us, but to the scientists who discovered it, they were able to put that together um, and figure out what he might have looked like. In this room, we have an interactive puzzle where you can put together Pangaea based on the continents separated as we know them today. Also on that puzzle, you can see different creatures that span across Pangaea, both in what we know as Antarctica today and other countries as well. In this room, we talk about how the scientists get the fossils from Antarctica. It's a lot different than what you think of when digging fossils. Usually you think of dust and using brushes. Well, in, in Antarctica, we can't do that. The rock is so hard and hasn't been weathered that they have to use things like power tools, big jackhammers, rock saws, sledgehammers to get those pieces out of the rock. Videos play to guide you through the journey of one of the expeditions that some of the scientists have gone on. So we get to see from getting to the site, digging the fossils, and getting those fossils home. We also have an actual rock from Antarctica, which you can touch and feel and see some of the uh, vertebrae sticking out. Now we've come to our largest and probably most exciting room in the exhibit, our dinosaur room. In here, right behind me, we have a recreation of the Cryolophosaurus skeleton. Now, he's not real, but everything you guys see in the glass cases are going to be real fossils that they obtained from Antarctica. Now, the Cryolophosaurus is actually a really, really old dinosaur. As far as the dinosaur timeline goes, he's in that early Jurassic period, really early on. To give you kind of a perspective, the time between the Cryolophosaurus and when dinosaurs went extinct is about twice the length of time as between the dinosaurs going extinct and where we are today. The Cryolophosaurus is a really old dinosaur. However, as far as the discoveries go, the bones, the oldest ones that we have, are only from 1990. In addition to the Cryolophosaurus skeleton, we also have a recreation of what we believe he looked like back in the day, feathers and all. And when they first discovered him, they gave him the nickname Elvisaurus. Now that comes from the cool little crest that is on top of his head. So in this room, we don't just have big meat eaters like our Cryolophosaurus. We also have some smaller herbivores like our Sauropodomorphs. Now these Sauropodomorphs aren't yet formally named, but they are part of a group that are going to give rise to the giant sauropods, some of the largest animals to ever walk the earth. Just like the Cryolophosaurus, we have a recreation of what we believe these guys look like, as well as a recreation of the skeleton. We also have a large block of fossils containing different pieces from the sauropodomorphs. It's paired with an interactive element where you can actually move around scans of the fossils and see different bones pointed out to you by clicking on them. Our next room covers aquatic life in Antarctica, from ancient sea life to modern penguins that we know today. 
When you first walk in, you're greeted by a video that explains how Antarctica froze over due to the continent shifting away from it and it being locked in by cold water currents. This cold environment made the perfect home for certain species of penguins, like the emperor penguin. Emperor penguins, along with a lot of other birds, are descendants of three-toed meat-eating dinosaurs called theropods. However, the largest creature in this room is our Taniwasaurus, a type of mosasaur. Now, bones from this mosasaur have been found near Antarctica, Japan, and New Zealand. This gives us a big clue, telling us that Antarctica wasn't always surrounded by those cold water currents, but actually had some warm water in there that could host these guys. A couple of quick facts about our Taniwasaurus. He was a large predator of the ocean, measuring about 23 feet long. If we break his name down, it means a mythical sea lizard of Antarctica. And if you look closely, the Taniwasaurus, like other mosasaurs, has, has two sets of teeth. You have his regular teeth that you can see, but also on the roof of his, of his mouth, he has a second set of palate teeth. Our last room of the exhibit highlights some of the other research being done in Antarctica. Scientists traveled to Antarctica to study things like fossil pollen, ice shells, lichen, ice cores, and even meteorites. This final room highlights why Antarctica is such an important resource to the scientific community and why it needs to be protected. Well, that's it, guys. I'm Callie. I hope you learned something on this walkthrough of our Antarctic dinosaurs exhibit at Discovery Place Science. Bye!